given nutrient cures a disease or mitigates uh, the symptomology is irrelevant when it comes to determining how important a supplement is. And we don't want to fall for this kind of nonsense, this medical model BS, because we're going to be depriving ourselves of some very, very important and vital nutrients that are easily available through supplementation. And by the way, do you know there's a prescription drug that's an omega-3 fatty acid? Yes, it's called Lovesa. Check this out. On the one hand, omega-3s don't work, right? They don't, have, they don't affect cardiovascular health. They don't help you with your brain, or they don't help you uh, with, your, uh, with your heart or whatever, your kidneys, your skin. They don't help you with anything. But on the other hand, GlaxoSmithKline, one of the biggest drug companies on the planet, has a drug that's nothing more than a tweaked out version, a manipulated version, a patented structure that is an omega-3 fatty acid, except it's got a little twist to it. And that allows GlaxoSmithKline and French not only to patent the drug, but to sell it to us for $500 a month. I'm not kidding you. It's called Lovesa, L-O-V-A-Z-A. And Lovesa is an omega, they call it an omega-3 ester, which means it's kind of tweaked a little bit. And this esterifying or tweaking of the omega-3 molecule allows GlaxoSmithKline to own it and patent it, and it's theirs, and they can sell it for 500, maybe if you if you get it discounted, maybe 300 a month. Of course, most people's most people will just pay a copay because insurance will cover it, but somebody's paying for that. So they don't work on the one hand, but they work so well, you, they cost you uh, $10 a day or, or up to 15 or, or even more dollars a day. Same stuff you get in your ultimate EFAs, by the way. The same, better, because the stuff in your omega, in your ultimate EFAs is not tweaked. It's the real deal. This is a classic example of pharmacomedical model scam revealed in all its devious glory. The only way that we can be fooled here, by the way, is because we don't understand nutrition. We don't really understand what it's about. I was talking to somebody yesterday, or a couple days ago, and she was asking me about the Mighty 90 for her brother. She said her brother was on medication, had a beta blocker uh, for his heart, and uh, I forgot what the other, oh, he was on an alpha blocker, beta blocker that blocks the heart and something called an alpha blocker for the prostate. Remember, blocker means poison. So anyway, he's on this poison beta blocker, and then he's on a poison alpha blocker for his prostate, and uh, she wanted to know if the Mighty 90 would interfere with the drugs, and this is a question I get all the time. Will my nutrients interfere with my drugs? And the only reason we can even ask that question is because we don't understand nutrition, because we bought the medical model idea that nutrition is about uh, nutritional supplementations are drugs. They're just over-the-counter versions. We bought this idea that the, the benefits of nutrients are medicinal benefits. So we think that maybe they'll interfere with our drugs. The only reason we can ask that question is because we don't understand what nutrition is. So, you know, I, I'm, I've been doing this for 30 years, so sometimes I take for granted what people understand. So I try to think to myself, how can I explain this to this gal, nice gal, she wanted to help her brother out. How can I explain the nature of nutrition so that that question wouldn't even make any sense, that you wouldn't even enter your mind to ask that question? And I'm going to tell you what I told her when we come back from our break, and then we'll get your phone calls, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you, and if you're on hold, please hang tight. We'll get to you here in just a sec. I want to just uh, tell a story real quick because I think it highlights the misunderstanding, the misunderstandings we have, or better, the non-understandings we have about how nutrition really works. So uh, my friend calls me up. She wants to know if, if uh, the mighty 90 essential nutrients will interfere with her brother's medication. And it's a question I get all the time. Will these drugs interfere with my, or will these uh, nutrients interfere with my drugs? Which in my head, I'm thinking, how can we even ask that question? How can nutrients interfere with poisons in a negative way? They help, they'll help the body handle the poison better. They'll make the poison more effective. They'll reduce the side effects of the poison. But for the most part, with some exceptions, there's a couple minor exceptions. But for the most part, it's not, it doesn't even make sense, the question. But it makes sense in light of the fact that we think of nutrients based on how our doctors talk to us as drugs. They're not. 
So anyway, I was trying to think, how can I explain this in a simple way? How can I explain what nutrition really is? So what I did was I told, I, this is how I explained it to her. I said, you got two kinds of nutrition, first of all. You got macro nutrition and you got micro nutrition. Macro nutrition is calories, protein, fats, and sugar. Those are your calories. Something has calories, it's a macronutrient. Protein, fat, and sugar are your macronutrients. They're the vast com amount. They're the largest components of food. Then there are the micronutrients. Remember, we're, we're all about making distinctions here. You know, we talk all the time about distinctions, distinctions between cells and tissue, distinctions between uh, microinflammation and macroinflammation, distinctions between the cell disease and tissue and organ disease. Another dis distinction is macronutrition versus micronutrition. Micronutrition has no calories. Micronutrition is your vitamins, minerals, and your amino acids. Your micronutrients are not used for fuel like the macronutrients, they're used to facilitate chemistry. And you guys, someday I'll do just a show on the amazing, mind-blowing, jaw-dropping nature of biochemistry, but suffice it to say, micronutrients are the magic that makes it happen. The vitamins, the minerals, and the fatty acids and the amino acids, these micronutrients are what make the magic of biochemistry happen and you can't make them. They come from food. And as food is processed, they disappear, which means as food is processed and as we eat those foods, we cannot help but become deficient. So what I told this gal is micronutrients are what the cell eats. Just like we eat the macronutrients to get energy, the cell eats the micronutrients to facilitate its energy. Micronutrients are cell food. And just like you need food to do your function, a cell needs food to do its. And if you're on a prescription drug, it needs more food because it's doing more work. A prescription drug makes the body work harder, especially the detox part of it. And nutrition facilitates all of that. Nutrition is the micronutrients. I'm not talking the macronutrients, which are used for energy and for some for construction, perhaps as raw material for construction. I'm talking the micronutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the fatty acids, and the amino amino acids are what a cell eats. And without them, the cell starves. And just like a human being starves without macronutrition, a cell starves without micronutrition. And that means everything, including your drugs, everything in the body, including how the body responds to drugs, will work better when a cell has its mighty 90 essential nutrients. The mighty 90 essential nutrients are the essential nutrients that your body cannot make that a cell needs to eat. That's as simple as I can get it and tell it to your doctor. I don't know, in light of this, how could it possibly be, how could there possibly be a situation where nutrients are not important? Vital and unbelievably helpful. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tom in California, what's cooking? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Pharmacist Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good, man, how you doing? I'm pretty good, thanks. Um, my question is, is about vitamin A. Um, I've been taking vitamin A for a, while, a little while now. Uh, I was taking the uh, natural form from fish liver oil, about 25,000 IUs about every other day. And now I'm taking the uh, retinol form of it, about 5,000 IUs a day. My problem is, is that every time I, I start taking it, like for a week or so, my skin on my face gets dry. And I was just wondering if you knew why that was. And I, I would was not attribute. I, I would look for something else, Tom. That doesn't sound like a vitamin A issue. And, and from a biochemistry point of view, I can't see how that would occur. Um, that vitamin A should, will never, I've never heard of that happening. So I would think that there's something else percolating along. What else is going on in your health? So if, if, unless the dryness is just superficial and mild, if it's significant enough for you to have a, you know, complain about it or it, it bothers you in some way, then that tells me something else is percolating in the body. That doesn't just happen on its own. Usually when there's fat, when there's a, a, a dryness problem, it's a fat production problem. There's fats in the skin that keep the skin moist. This, there's other factors, but this is the, the most important factor. There's fats in the skin that keep the skin moist under conditions of either malabsorption, where you're not absorbing your fats, or 
uh, uh, deficiencies where you're not getting fats in your diet, that's when you're going to get dry. And fat by fats, I mean vitamin A, vitamin D, and essential fatty acids primarily. So what I would ask, if, to get to the bottom of this, what I'd ask you is what else is going on with your health? Is there anything else going on that you know of? Um, well, are you, I mean, are you on medication? Be, I don't, not that I know of. How, well, how old are you, Tom? Uh, 38. Are you on any medication? Um, taking Zoloft. Okay, well, there you go. That would definitely do it. Um, but Zoloft is another, there's something else. Uh, if you're on Zoloft and it's for strictly emotional kinds of things, like strictly psychological kinds of things, maybe you could separate out the Zoloft from your biochemistry. But a lot of times, the emotional and psychological things, uh, uh, symptomology that Zoloft works with are a sign of hypoglycemia or perhaps some kind of food allergen. You got to put a picture together of a bunch of health challenges that you have. Zoloft is on the right track, but because it's more of a mental health issue, you got to come up with some other dot. You got to you got to collect the dots before you can connect the dots, and you have to connect the dots to get a picture of what's happening in your body. And I'm not just talking to Tom here. I'm talking to everybody who's dealing with a health challenge. You want to start to put together all the symptoms so you could form a picture of what's happening in the body. Right now we got a couple of pictures, a couple of points, Tom. And that doesn't quite give us a picture yet. You need three points at least to get a good picture. Uh, we got the, the you know, I, I take it it's as an anti-anxiety or antidepressant. That's why you're using the Zoloft probably, right? Yeah. For, for one of those. And then, uh, and then the dry skin. So what else? Give me one more point and we'll get a picture here. Anything else you could think of? You may want to think about it if you don't know off the top of your head. Um, I I would Absolutely. suspect, I would look at the digestive system. Malabsorption is where I would be focusing on, especially yeah. around fats. Try this. Get a bunch of fat, coconut oil, or maybe uh, Udo's blend, and do like a, a, a lot of it and see what happens. If you notice you feel queasy or sick, it's possible, it doesn't necessarily mean 100%, but it's possible you're dealing with fat malabsorption. Start using digestive enzymes, ultimate enzymes, uh, the, the bioluminightly essence and fermented foods, anything that supports intestinal health, and then continue on with your fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids. By the way, omega-3 fats might be important for you as we've been talking, especially if you're dealing with fat malabsorption. Do you have anything else, Tom? I want to, I'll, I'll hold you back. Well, the only, only other thing is that any, whenever I stop taking it, it, it goes away. The A. The vitamin but A. You, so hang on, then don't go away. Let's work with that, okay? okay. Don't go away. Okay. All right, if you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back from our break. We'll finish up with Tom as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back over this, after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hey, Tom. Tomas Hi. in California. Hey, Tom, terrific. Let me see here. Tom. Tom? Yeah, I bet. Hey, so, hey, buddy. So here's the deal. If you're doing a controlled experiment where you've controlled every single variable but the vitamin A and you're noticing this issue where you get drier after you, when you take it and, and less dry when you stop, then I would yeah. tell you, well, obviously it's a controlled experiment, so you've factored out everything, and it's got to be the vitamin A. Problem is, so there's two problems. Number one, you can't really do a controlled experiment unless you're very, very controlled about it. You're very serious about it, and you're watching all the variables. And secondly, there's no real mechanism for this to be occurring. Now, I may be missing something, but I can't see how that could possibly occur. So I'm not going to deny your experience. But what I would suggest you do, and the reason I'm suggesting this is because if you think it's the vitamin A, uh, then you may, miss, you may be missing something. So what I suggest you do is try to control all the variables as best as possible, maybe switch the brands of vitamin A, that's another thing to try, and see if you can play around with this X factor, the vitamin A, controlling all the variables. Don't change the way you eat. Don't change the way you supplement. Don't change anything. The only thing you're going to work with is the vitamin A. That's what I mean when I say do a controlled experiment and start to play with it. Do a different brand, perhaps. Take it with, a diff uh, with food or without food. Vary that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Play around with some yeah. of the variables with the vitamin A and see if you notice a difference. If you do notice a difference, then you, you're right. It was the vitamin A. If you don't notice a difference, chances are it's something else. Okay? Okay. So that, that, be a scientist about it. That's basically what we're yeah, talking about here. Yeah. The scientific method. All right, Tom, i got to move. Thanks so much for your call, man. Okay. I hope I helped. Thank All you. right, take care. Have a good day. All right, Dr. Kathy Sparkle Markle, Ph.D., psych, 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 psychologist, I think, right, Doc? Psychologist. Psychologist, psychologist. Yale, and highly regarded. 
Dr. Kathy Markle, and fan of the truth, I might add. Oh, thank you, Ben. I am definitely a fan of the truth, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. I did have a first question about 